is the second highest mountain in the world, standing at 8,611 meters or 28,251 feet tall. It is located on the border of Pakistan and China in the Karakoram mountain range. K2 is also known by two other names, Mount Godwin Austin and Chagori. The local name, Chagori, means Great Mountain in the Balti language. The mountain was also briefly named Mount Godwin Austin in honor of Henry Godwin Austin, a British surveyor and explorer who first mapped the Karakoram range in the late 19th century. The mountain is called K2, because it was the second peak, listed by another British surveyor, Thomas George Montgomery. Montgomery, used a simple numbering system to designate the peaks in the range, with K1 being the highest peak, which is now known as Masherbrum, and K2 being the second highest. The K in the name stands for Karakoram and the two indicates that it is the second peak listed. The name K2 was officially adopted and is still used today by mountaineers, scientists, and in official records. K2's location in a remote area, makes it a difficult destination for climbers, local supporters, and rescue teams. Weather permitting, it takes an 8 hours bumpy ride, in 4x4 vehicles, followed by a 128 km, or 80 miles hike, to reach the K2 base camp, which is located at an altitude of 2,102 meters, or 6,896 feet. Climbers then proceed to Goro 2 camp, at 4,250 meters, or 13,828 feet, and after acclimatization, continue their hike on an earth-covered glacier to reach the Camp Gashabram 4 at 7,925 meters, or 26,000 feet. The arrival in Broad Peak Base Camp, signals the start of the ascent to the K2 summit. There are nine tested routes, to the top of K2, but nowadays, the so-called Abruzzi Spur, aka the Southeast Ridge, on the west face, seems to be the preferred route of climbers, in order to summit the mountain. As shown in this computer animation, K2, is surrounded by steep, and snow-covered hills. As a matter of fact, the Karakoram range has 18 summits, which are over 7,500 meters. Besides K2, there are three more mountains above 8,000 meters in close proximity. K2 is nicknamed the Savage Mountain, 
Because of its extremely difficult and dangerous climbing conditions, the peak has a very steep and technical ascent with unpredictable weather and high winds, making it one of the most challenging and deadly mountains to climb. The name Savage Mountain was given to it by early European explorers who were impressed by its daunting appearance and the difficulty of climbing it. K2 is known for its extremely difficult and dangerous climbing conditions, which have led to numerous deadly accidents, with a fatality rate of around 25% over the years. Statistically, out of every four climbers, one dies on K2. Several accidents and fatalities illustrate the extreme danger of climbing K2. Only experienced and well-equipped climbers should therefore tackle the mountain and make an attempt to the summit. The combination of steep and technical terrain, unpredictable weather, and high altitude makes K2 one of the most challenging and deadly mountains to climb. The Art Gilkey Memorial, erected to honor climbers who died on K2, is full of engraved nameplates. If a climber is not at the peak of his, or her physical, and mental strength, and not 100% committed to reaching the summit, this memorial site should definitely be the last point of return. Some of the most notable accidents on K2 include In 1986, 13 climbers died on K2 in a single day, marking the deadliest day in the mountain's history. This disaster was caused by a combination of factors, including bad weather, poor communication, and inexperienced climbers. In 2008, 11 climbers were killed in a series of accidents on K2. A group of climbers was trapped by the collapse of a large block of ice or serac, while another group was caught in an avalanche. In 2019, a number of climbers died on K2 due to avalanches and falls. In 2020, another avalanche killed 11 climbers. There are several factors that have an effect on climbers and make K2 one of the most difficult and dangerous mountains to climb. The hardest obstacles to the summit and on the way back during the descent are the following. 1. Altitude. The high altitude presents a number of challenges, including thin air, which increases the risk of altitude sickness. The lack of oxygen in the dead zone above 8,000 meters makes breathing incredibly difficult and can lead to oxygen-starved bodies of climbers. 2. Technical climbing. The mountain's steep and technical terrain requires climbers to have a high level of skill and experience. The slope is often covered in loose rock and ice, making it difficult to find secure footing, and climbers must navigate steep rock faces, ice walls, and overhanging ledges of snow or ice, called cornishes. 3. Weather K2's climate is known for its unpredictability, with high winds and storms that can quickly change the conditions on the mountain. These sudden changes in weather can make it difficult for climbers to summit and can also increase the risk of accidents and avalanches. 4. Remoteness, the mountain is located in a remote area, which makes it difficult for rescue teams to reach climbers in need of help. The nearest base camp is around 30 miles away, and it can take several days to reach. 5. Crowding, the climbing season on K2 is very short, and this makes the mountain crowded with climbers, which can lead to delays in the dead zone and to accidents of various kinds.
On the way to the summit, the Broad Peak, which is part of the Gasherbur Massif, and located about 8 kilometers, or 5 miles from K2, offers stunning views. It has a summit over 1.5 kilometers or nearly a mile long, hence the name. Despite its reputation, K2 has a strong allure for mountaineers, and many climbers have attempted to summit the mountain. The first successful ascent was made by an Italian team in 1954. Since then, many other climbers have made it to the summit, but the mountain still remains one of the most challenging and deadly peaks to climb. The allure of summiting K2, comes from the sense of accomplishment, and the thrill of overcoming such a formidable challenge. Additionally, the remote, and isolated location of the mountain adds to its allure, as it is less frequently climbed than other peaks, such as Mount Everest. In recent years, attempts of descending at high speed, added even more to the existing level of difficulty of mastering K2, but increased the euphoria after a successful return. In this regard, the world's first ski descent of K2, was accomplished by Andrzej Bargiel of Poland, in July 2018. This video will end with some spectacular drone footage of Bargiel's successful descent. Thank you for watching. Dzięki wielkie, powolutku jadę na dół, hej. How many people go up? Huh? Now go right side, yeah? Mm. 
No. Nice, yeah. Snow go right side, yeah? Uh, okay. Yeah. Good luck. Jędrek, trzymaj się skał z lewej strony. Możesz jechać teraz troszeczkę na seraki, ale raczej trzymaj się jak najbliżej tych skał. Bo ten obóz jest pod skałami, tak? Tak, jest pod skałami. Jędrek, teraz stoisz nad takim wąskim gardłem. Później kawałek niżej masz taką w miarę dużą skałę. I później za tą skałą musiał się kierować troszeczkę w lewo. Nie, wy, nie wysuwaj się za bardzo w prawo swoje. Dobra, jadę, bo mgła idzie. Zbyt niebezpieczny do tego. Czek, ale pod tobą są szczeliny. Pod... Ale ja widzę to wszystko spokojnie. Jak się czujesz? Te ludzi trzeba uważać, żeby ich nie zabijać. O, dzięki. To jesteśmy w jednym klubie teraz. Trzeba zejść jeszcze. 
Co czas jest? Jadę trzy żele tylko dzisiaj. Muszę to jechać. Przed wyprawą powiedziałeś, że to najtrudniejsza rzecz, jaką, jaką robisz. Góra. I już prawie masz to za sobą. Jeszcze kawałek uwagi i jest ok. K2 gives you a very small weather window to climb and if you're not 100% ready as well then the mountain's gonna kill you.